What's up everyone? Welcome to the Poly Casino 400 Top 5 DFS Picks video for Sunday, February 26th at Auto Club Speedway. And as always, I'm your host Chris Pinnell. You can find me on Twitter at ChrisPinnell16. And this video is presented by Prize Picks. In today's video, we are going over general track strategy, how to approach the slate from a DFS perspective, and my top 5 favorite plays on the slate. Now, as of right now, this video is being recorded pre-practice and qualifying, but looking at the forecast this weekend, it looks like practice and qualifying will more than likely be washed out. And if that's the case, we already know the potential starting lineup. So as we progress through this video, I'll be referencing their more than likely starting positions for this week. But just know if qualifying and practice does happen, the order is not going to be the same as it, what I am referencing. And if you want the up-to-date information on that, I'd highly recommend checking out the projections that we have on the site for the most up-to-date info. And as far as how we should approach this day from a DFS perspective, it's going to be a little bit different than normal because typically at these intermediate type tracks, we're looking at one to two dominators. Although if qualifying does happen to get washed out, the order is basically set on how they finished last week with a couple other factors. And that means we have a decent amount of big name drivers starting in the back. And there's not that many laps this week, only 200 because it's a bigger track, two miles in length. It's also very high tire wear, so it's going to eat up the tires. And at these track types last year, we saw multiple dominators per race. So I don't think dominators is going to be an essential part of our lineups this week. It's fine to roster a couple if you want, starting closer to the front to get off some of the chunk in tournaments. But these big name drivers on the back can really make up for the lack of downer points early on with the place differential points that they offer. Because if drivers are getting at least projected like 10 to 15 points up front, these guys can make up for it with around 30, dom uh, 30 place differential points and then be a factor to dominate in the second or third stage of this race. So that's something to keep in mind when building lineups. If you're playing tournaments, I don't mind taking some stabs up front. But if you were playing cash games, I highly recommend just sticking to the drivers in the back. All right, so moving on to the picks, so we'll start with number five. And it's a driver that I have some decent expectations for this year. At least higher expectations than what I had for Cole Custer when he was in this car last year. But we're looking at Ryan Priest, driver of the 41 car for Stuart Haas Racing. 6700 bucks on DraftKings, 5500 bucks over on Fandle. He is potentially starting in 27th here. So we have some decent place differential upside. And I do think he's going to be a top 20, top 15 contender most weeks this year. I know the clash doesn't mean too much, but it did show a lot of speed in that race. So I think the car's definitely got some juice in it this season. I think Ryan Priest is certainly a more talented driver than Cole Custer as well and should be able to handle this car better. So Ryan Priest here, if you're just looking for a driver that's pretty cheap and offers some place difference upside, I do like him quite a bit at this price point. And moving on to number four, we are looking at Eric Jones, driver of the 43 car for now Legacy Motor Club. He comes in at $7,700 on DraftKings, $8,000 flat on Fandle. And he has the potential starting spot of 34th, which is near the very back here. We have 36 cars this weekend. And he was super fast at this track last season. I know things have changed a little bit since then, but he's still in the same car these days, just a different name on the team. And he had one of the best cars on the track. I mean, green flag speed-wise, he was at the tops of the chart. He was running in the top five for the majority of the day, picking up fast laps. And he's a very good driver at Auto Club. Now, keep in mind, he used to be in Joe Gibbs Racing Equipment. Now he's in a bit of a downgraded car. But he won Darlington last year. And the high tire wear tracks, honestly not that bad. And one of the better drivers at Auto Club in general. So you're mainly just picking Eric Jones here based off the place differential. But this has been a good track for him. He has shown speed here in the past. And it's really hard to pass up the starting spot. And before we get into our next pick, I got to mention our sponsor, Prize Picks, because they make these videos possible. And as of right now, if you use promo code AWESOMO, you can get an instant deposit match bonus up to $100 in addition to a free month of Stochastic Plus Platinum. So use that Platinum Plus plan to take advantage of all the props they have over on Prize Picks with all the tools we have over on the site. And again, that is promo code AWESOMO to take advantage of the awesome deal that we have currently going on. All right, so moving on to number three here, we have a driver that I think is personally underpriced, William Byron, $8,900 on DraftKings, 10K flat over on FanDuel. And the qualifying, again, like I keep saying, is rained out. He has the potential to be starting 32nd here with some of the better odds to win this race over in Vegas. He was amazing at the high tire wear tracks last year. Actually grabbed the lead at some point. Auto Club last season before having issues in wrecking out. He had the best average game flag speed rating of all drivers at the inner high, high tire wear tracks last season. So I'm not seeing any reason not to like Byron here. I think he should be closer to the mid 9K range. We're getting him in the 8K range here with some massive play stuff on the upside. And honestly, race winning potential as well. Some of the best numbers overall at the high tire wear tracks last season. So William Byron at this price point, I'm firing him up, and even if qualifying does take place and does not offer this massive place differential upside that we currently have, 
I still like him in tournaments. And moving on to number two, we have the driver right above him in pricing on DraftKings. It's Tyler Reddick, 9,100 bucks on DraftKings, 9K flat over on Fanduel. And I'll tell you right now, a qualifying does get washed out. This is an absolute free square on both sides. He is underpriced. He dominated Auto Club last year, one of the best drivers at high tire wear tracks. And he is potentially starting in 35th. And it's hard not to like him. He's got some of the best odds to win this race in Vegas. Uh, even with Martin Truex Jr., Joey Logano, Ross Chastain, some of the better drivers in the field. Just great at these track types, great at Auto Club. We saw it last year before he ended up having issues similar to William Byron. So Reddick, again, starting in the very back, it's going to be very hard to pass him up. Yes, the ownership is going to be extremely high, but more than likely, he's going to be our highest projected driver and for good reason. And if you want to see all those projections, you can get your first week half off using promo code SCORE. And before we get into our final pick here, our number one play for the Apollo Casino 400 at Auto Club Speedway. Do me a favor, leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet done so. And if you have any questions, leave those down below. I'd be more than happy to get back to you. But number one play here is going to be Kyle Larson for me. $10,800 on DraftKings, $14,000 over on FanDuel. He won this race last year. He's potentially starting around 15th. He's got the best odds to win this race over in Vegas. He's popping all the charts for me, tops in all the simulation models and everything. I mean, it's just hard not to like Kyle Larson. He averaged the most DraftKings points per race at the high tire wear tracks last season, the most dominant points, had some of the best overall numbers in general, green flag speed wise. He checked out inside the top five. So really hard not to like Kyle Larson here. And while he does not offer as much place differential as a guy, potentially I should say, as like a Chase Elliott or Tyler Reddick or William Byron, I think he's got the best chance to win this race here. I think he can get up front. I think he can lead laps and dominate. If that's going to be the case, he's going to be someone that you're going to need in your lineups this weekend. So just to recap at number five, we have Ryan Priest, number four, Eric Jones, number three, William Byron, number two, Tyler Reddick, and number one, Kyle Larson. That's all I got for you guys this week. If you have any questions, please leave those down below. I wish you all the best of luck, and I'll see you all next week.